Hey, welcome to Matt's Workbench, and if you grew up in the 90s, one thing that you probably lusted after was a portable CD player, right? And they, they, they felt unattainable, they felt magical, and the day that you finally got one, you felt like you were somebody, right? So today, we're going to open this time capsule. So this right here is my first portable CD player from the mid-90s. And man, I tell you what, it, I worked so hard. Well, all right, first of all, dif disclaimer, this exact unit is not my first portable CD player. Like everybody else, at a certain point, you, I don't even know what I did with it. I think I, th I sold it maybe five bucks at a garage sale or something like that. Uh, but uh, I saw this and I had to get it because it was exactly the same as the one that I bought back in the mid 90s i would have been about i don't know 13 14 years old and 99 dollars i can't express how much money that was for a 13 year old in 1995 96 like that was an almost inconceivable amount of money that that you would actually possess for yourself as a young person in the mid 90s and so I, I mowed yards, I saved up money, I, I think I even sold, you know, like pumpkins or something, and uh, finally had enough money to purchase this bad boy right here. And uh, it, it, this was not the top of the line model. In, in fact, this was maybe like an entry level CD player in 1996, 95-ish, and uh, <laughs> was not even like the coolest, but it was a CD player, it was portable, and that's all that mattered. Nobody cared about anything else. So we'll take a look at this. We'll pop this open. Uh, this is mostly complete as far as what's inside. And uh, I'm excited to uh, bust this uh, bad boy open. But uh, let's take a look at the box right here and just kind of see. Uh, I always like, so Magnavox, right? Smart. Very smart. I always loved <laughs> this, uh, what would you call it, uh, slogan or whatnot, I, I can just imagine it at the Magnavox Corporation there sitting around like, we need a new slogan. Johnson, what do you got? Um, uh, Magnavox, uh, smart. That's stupid. Uh, <laughs> Kim, what do you got? Uh, how about smart? Very smart. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> it's great. Put it on everything we sell. But look at this. I mean, how 90s is this? You've got a cigarette lighter adapter, CD to cassette adapter. And here's the thing. They called it a cigarette lighter adapter because that's what we called it then. They weren't power adapters. They weren't, you know, 12 volt power sources. It was just, it was a cigarette lighter adapter. You, you unplugged the cigarette lighter. You plugged in your portable CD player. Dynamic bass boost. Super popular. Shuffle play and a hold switch. And that's it. That is the total features that you get with this thing. Like you don't get uh, repeat. <laughs> you don't get anything like that with this unit. But you do get shuffle and you do get a hold switch. Which is the most useless thing ever because a hold switch is to where like if you were to accidentally bump a button, right? Well, if you accidentally bump this thing, it skips like crazy. I mean, this is the very beginning of portable CD players. So, uh, I mean, this, but look at this packaging. Look at these colors, man. Yellow. You got some turquoise in here. You got hot pink. It does not get more 90s than this oh this is so good man um all right here we go we're gonna crack her open here <laughs> yeah. so we've got the uh warranty and registration card did uh did the previous owner fill this out no look at that we could we could uh get this registered today return within 10 days you think we're good to go on that on that retail price paid that's yeah so i paid i remember vividly it was 99 dollars you know because it was less than 100 um but uh yeah you could fill all of this in uh you get your your warranty uh in there which probably only just puts you on a magnavox mailing list to be honest so and then uh <laughs> i imagine this is in like 45 languages because this is one of those fold out um Instruction manuals. Yep, there's Espanol, uh, <laughs> French, 
Fran French in the English day. There is some English. Yeah, make sure you close it till it clicks. So much of this stuff. So obvious. Oh yeah, this has a little battery tray. Look at that. Four AA batteries just to operate this bad boy. Can you imagine? Like you would chew through batteries like crazy. I don't remember how long the batteries lasted uh, either. Oh, look at those little earbuds. That's kind of cool. I didn't know they had those back in the day. I always thought those kind of came later, but uh, that's one thing that I noticed uh, in the listing that it did not have. Um, it does not have the original uh, headphones, which these were not awful, especially for the time period. You got to remember, mid '90s headphones were pretty much universally terrible, just absolutely terrible. Um, so the ones that kind of like stuck in your ear and got as close to your eardrum as possible were, were kind of some of the better ones. But, uh, man, look at that. I love, I love documentation uh, for, you know, electronics or uh, just about anything. I, I keep all of my son's, like, Hot Wheels, uh, you know, setup instructions and stuff. I don't know why. I just love documentation. I love instruction booklets and things like that. And they're almost always perfect because no one ever looks at them. <laughs> but if you don't look at them, like, you miss out on all of these great illustrations you know, like somebody took the time to go through and uh, and draw these, and uh, I I don't, I just really appreciate it. I really uh, in a world where you you buy stuff now and you don't get any manuals whatsoever, it's kind of refreshing, you know. Uh, so let's see, we can pop through here, uh, and I don't even know, like I know what comes with this, but I don't know what is what. Like oh, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> this has never been used. I mean, I can tell. Who would take the time to put this back into a uh, a baggie? But th these were super important because uh, if you wanted to get uh, CDs into your car, for a lot of people, this was it. Because so many cars came with cassette players, uh, but not that many had CD players. And uh, yeah, there's no tape in here, but it's got a little head, uh, a little head here that uh, basically, I mean, this would be the it's almost like if you were to record something, right? So if you wanted to record something on the tape, you would put your uh, tape into record mode. Well, this would just play back this head in record mode directly onto the head that was in your tape player. And so it would be outputting your signal here directly into the input of the tape head in your deck. And uh, boom, like that, you got, uh, you got CD sound. CD! for car cassette adapter by Magnavox. Yeah, so at this point, the uh, audio cut out on my recording, but uh, how do you feel about the brand Magnavox? You know, I feel like it was a, kind of a mid-tier. Like, it definitely felt like maybe, I mean, you weren't buying the bottom basement. I remember for sure feeling like uh, Emerson uh, was, uh, was kind of a bargain basement brand, but Magnavox, I really felt like you got a little bit more for your money. I, man, I don't know. What do you think? But... Uh, here, let's take a look at the <laughs> power adapter. Gosh dang, these things are so ridiculous. Uh, the wall warts, as people call them. Uh, yeah, you can tell that this is this has been repackaged for sure and used. But, um, you know, this is important because uh, you had to have these bad boys. Uh, otherwise, you'd be chewing through batteries all the time. So if you wanted to sit in your bed and listen to CDs, you know, you, uh, you had to plug this thing in. And uh, otherwise you were begging your parents to buy more batteries and they were just going to tell you no so you can't have can't have that happening <laughs> but uh it's it's nice that it comes with it uh in a world now where you can get a lot of rechargeable batteries and things like that uh it's it's still cool to have and such a cool shape to those things too uh what is this guy this is oh yeah this is the cigarette lighter adapter not the 12 volt power supply <laughs> oh man yeah so Again, you know, same same thing, but only in your car. You know, especially people would buy these to specifically put in their car. Uh, you know, like you had a tape deck in your car, and you were just going to basically permanently install this into your vehicle so that you could listen to CDs. Yeah, you know, kind of like a was it Wayne's World? Wayne's World Two, where they 
<laughs> they upgraded the Gremlin with the uh, CD player. Uh, so yeah, plug that bad boy in and you got juice as long as your car doesn't die. And uh, ah yes, the star of the show, packaged in styrofoam that will outlast all of us. <laughs> uh, I hope this is in uh, this is in good shape and. Uh, because it's stuff this old, you just never know. You just never know what shape it's going to be in when uh, you actually order it off of eBay and then see it for the first time. But uh, this looks pretty nice. Looks pretty good. Um, yeah, it's got the shiny Magnavox letters. I was a little worried about that. You know, sometimes that stuff can get scratched off over time. But with such a basic and simple design, these CD players at the time. There, and again, this was an entry-level thing. You know, this is not the first portable CD player ever, um, but it sure was, man, it was probably one of the first that was under $100, if I if I had to guess, because it just is, you know, the first portable CD players were just ridiculously expensive, you know, $200, $300. Uh, looking inside, yeah. I mean, looks like it's in good shape. Oh, yeah, this doesn't... Yeah, every CD player kind of had different mechanisms, but this kind of just flopped around until it had a little detent that you could notch it up to the top and stay on there. And it's got the little uh, ball bearings, to, the spring-loaded ball bearings to hold your CDs in. Uh, such a good thing. And nice snap shut. Uh, good stuff there. And, yeah, it's not... Uh, I mean, there's a few scratches here or there, but uh, nothing... I mean, honestly, this is... I repurchased this from someone else off of eBay... But if I had kept mine, I doubt it would be in this good a shape either. So, yeah, there we got our, what's the date on there? March 1995, which would be about uh, about right. So, uh, honestly, this is in overall pretty good shape. Uh, as long as it, you know, works and plays CDs and stuff. Uh, and there's the, <laughs> the battery tray. Did anything before 1995 take less than four AA batteries? You know, I remember the Game Boy took four double A batteries, and you get like three hours. I have no idea what the uh, runtime of four double A batteries on this would be. That'd be a fun thing to test out. But you, yeah, oh yeah, the window that was very important. You had to have the window because uh, you know you spent all this money on CDs. You wanted to make sure that you know this wasn't just a magic black box. You wanted to make sure that there was actually a CD spinning in there. So you hit play and you watch your your CD spin around and uh, you. You'll feel better about your your purchase of your CD player and your CDs. Okay, so let's uh, load this guy up. We got uh, four AA batteries. Right here. You know, at some point, you know, sliding AA batteries into a device, it's going to be an experience that just doesn't exist in the world anymore. I'm not going to lie. Probably doubles the weight. <laughs> of this. So uh, just imagine four AA batteries and then double the weight of that. And now this really feels like a quality piece of electronics. <laughs> and so this thing, man, I tell you what, it needs a CD. And it, the thing that I love about CDs, I've been getting back into them so much. Uh, you know, when CDs started, and this is actually the first CD that I ever bought with my own money. Uh, <laughs> and this was back, you know, mid 90s early 90s and uh this is kind of what it was you had uh, a nice i mean you had the mirror finish on both sides and you'd have your tracks listed out on here but i mean it was pretty basic you know right here we got uh, dick clark's uh all-time hits uh and uh, i was a huge oldies fan uh back when i was a kid uh i used to call the radio local radio station and request oldies on saturday nights they did like a saturday night gold or something like that but uh yeah that's, this is good stuff. But then, you know, as time went on, you know, part of the joy of physical media and uh, and things was getting uh, these CDs, opening them up, and it was always kind of a surprise. Like, what was the uh, what was the album art gonna look like? What was the CD art gonna look like? Were you gonna get the lyrics uh, with it or not? You know, and uh, and they they kind of you know spiced them up a little. Basically, like you don't have the track listing on here. There's a little bit of artistic uh, thought that went into this, but you know, not a whole lot. And uh, then as time went on, you know, they started getting a little fancier, a little fancier. And uh, for instance, Winona here. No oh, man, now we're starting to get a little color on here, and that was just so cool because like you had no idea. 
you had no idea what was going to be in this. You pop the uh, cover open, and uh, wow, man, that looks that looks nice. You got your track listing on there and some fancy fonts and uh, all that sorts of good stuff. And then, you know, eventually you'd get to where uh, you get some whoa multiple colors <laughs> how cool is that you know you get your your track listing in here and then uh you know this is probably one of my favorites and again this is simple i mean it's and i'm kind of giving away some of my uh musical tastes here with <laughs> showing off all of my cds that i'm using but you know somebody really put some thought into presentation on something like this because i mean the curves of her signature match with the curves on the satin or whatever and the color of her jacket and you know I mean this is just this was the kind of experience that uh, it, it just it made spending 15 18 dollars on a CD worth it back in the day and there still just isn't possible to get out as they used to be but uh, and then yeah you would open these up and you know you didn't have the internet you couldn't go look up the lyrics to these things. So having this, which granted you could get this on cassettes too, but uh, but look at this. I mean, there's just so much stuff, so much information that you got in here when you bought a CD. So good and totally lost from the world today. I mean, it's just it, it's just such a shame. That uh, with the the era of digital music and uh, and I know that there's plenty of content out there everywhere and anywhere you want to go to uh, find out more about your favorite artist or whatever. Follow one on Instagram. I get it, but like I own this, you know. Like it's this is a physical thing. I can hold my hands. It is mine. So <laughs> I love it. So let's um, pop this guy open and uh, hopefully. It will spin a disc. You ready? Maybe. Oh, look at that. Did you see that? We're in hold mode. <laughs> you gotta turn the hold switch off. Let's try one more time. It works. <laughs> look at that. It's spinning. It's spinning. Oh, does, yep. And it skips. Look at this. This is all the information that you got. <laughs> and I was so happy to have it. Uh, you don't have to fast forward. You don't have to rewind. You want to go to track seven? Boom. We're already there. <laughs> and that's a cool thing, too. I don't know if you've ever noticed that about uh, CDs just in general. You know, here's track one. Look at how fast the disc is spinning. We're going to skip to track 10. And it slows down quite a bit. So it was, uh, I don't know what you call that, linear speed? Uh, not sure, but... Uh, yeah, so I know you want to know how it sounds. And because YouTube is the way it is, I unfortunately cannot play AC-DC volts uh, for you on YouTube. But we have... Uh, some of this uh, legally burned music from the uh, YouTube library. So we're going to plug this in, uh, and this is a brand new CD. I won't I won't know if this works until uh, <laughs> until I play this for you. So we'll see. I I couldn't just plug this apparently straight into my. Uh, my camera, which is my phone. Uh, so, oh my god, Windows is not activated. Um, how about you just ask me about that at a later date? Um, yeah, I understand. I understand the consequences of running Windows 7 on this uh, netbook. <laughs> this is an Asus uh, EPC. And uh, this is a dusty but pretty fantastic go-between computer. Uh, for a lot of different stuff like, uh, you know, I use this for downloading software off the internet for my Apple computers. And then it's got a audio input and output so that uh, I can, 
you know, uh, feed that software over the audio line into the, uh, you know, ADT Pro or something like that. Uh, but hopefully for this, uh, and I don't even remember, I kind of thought that this had XP on there, but, uh, whew, this thing just barely, barely runs Windows 7. Sound recorder, yes, it does still exist in Windows 7. That's, that's good news. So, hopefully, we can uh, feed some audio into this. And uh, get uh, get a little sound out of it. Yeah, here we go. Let's turn this up a little bit. Yeah, I mean it's it's not uh, you know it's not uh, ACDC or Winona, but. It works! I want to clean this up a little bit and uh, just try to get it as back to normal as possible. It's not all, it's not that bad, but we can't have a Matt's workbench without uh, getting out some of the cleaning supplies. Hey, this is such a simple just straightforward design. I appreciate a lot about it. Some of the CD players, you know, later in the lifetime of, of CDs period just got so wild and crazy. And Sony had some really crazy ones. But this is just a pretty basic, uh, I, I, I'm even going to say run-of-the-mill CD player. Uh, and again, this was not top of the line back in the day. This was not out to uh, make anyone... Uh, I guess jealous other than the people who flat out didn't have one and you did so <laughs> let's clean this guy up here if nothing else just to get you know other people's fingerprints off of it um, you know some of these like scratches and stuff I don't I don't know that those are gonna come out but just to say that this is you know touched by our hands and our hands alone <laughs> we'll clean it up and I'm just using Windex that's all uh that's all I'm using here and uh, as it dries it should dry fairly well I did notice um, this volume guy here was a little scratchy uh, and it looks like that wouldn't be too hard to get to but you know what we're just we're not gonna do that at least not in this video <laughs> I'm just too enthusiastic and too excited to have this and have this in working condition as it is. Let's see, it looks like we've got maybe some smudges on the inside there. How is this drying? Are we getting... Oh yeah, that looks good. Look at that. Compact disc digital audio. God, we're living in the future. See if we can get the inside here of this window. Yeah, there's some, I don't know if you can see, some junk on there. We want a crystal clear view of the bits and bytes that are going down inside this thing. Oh, a little more cleaning. Man, I tell you what, this is almost a surreal experience for me because... I spent so much time, so much time with my portable CD player back in the day. Just, it was fun just to, just period, it was fun to listen to anything on a CD. And uh, you couple that in with like songs that you liked and you loved. Like how were you exposed to new music, you know, back before the internet? Like how did you, how did you find out about it? You know, I had some friends who listened to some stuff that uh, I wasn't... Holy cow, did all of that grime and crap come off of this thing? Good grief. Yeah, I uh, I had some friends that would listen to stuff. We had uh, a local um, music and, and video rental store called Hastings, which was kind of a, like a regional version of Blockbuster. And uh, that was kind of where, you know, you could go in and you could preview. They'd have these little kiosks set up that you could go and 
uh, put the headphones on, push a button, and listen to a preview of an album or whatever. I mean, other than that, I mean, that's pretty much the only way that I was ever exposed to new music. You know, is uh, if you take the radio into account, like, you know, we didn't have any decent, uh, well, I'm not going to say decent. There were decent radio stations, but they weren't playing anything new or progressive. It was all radio that, you know, was already time-tested and uh, the stuff that my parents listened to, you know. As far as finding new music for me, I mean, that was hard to do. I mean, I had some friends who would turn me on to a track or two here and there or a new artist, but other than that, I mean, I just didn't... Uh, I didn't uh, have an opportunity to listen to new music almost anywhere. You know, I said those scratches weren't going to come out, but holy cow, if this doesn't look almost freaking brand new. I mean, oh my goodness. All right, I'm going to just put a little more elbow grease into it. Oh, yeah, we got, an, we got an error on the display there because we, we don't have a CD in. Why would you push play with no CD? Come on, guys. Yeah, we got... Uh... That's the, the thing about black plastic is you just don't see all of the, the grime and the dirt, which is nice on one hand, but on the other hand, you know, we're just trying to get this guy looking good. Let's get around these buttons because that's where the fingers would have been poking and prying. Look at that. Look, can you see that? There's a one. There was a decal here at one point. How long did that decal live on there to uh, to still be showing up at this point? That's crazy. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's not. It's not perfect, but it's looking pretty fantastic. Let's, uh, we got a few little specks of dust on there. And then, uh, let's, uh, just pop this open and I don't want to get too aggressive around that lens because I think it's barely aligned as it is, but, uh, <laughs> We could sure do with uh, cleaning that out of there a little bit. Man, that looks pretty, pretty good. Whoa, getting a little frosty there. Is that a, yeah, gosh, that looks good. Looks good. You know, I think one thing that we should do is we should take this out to the van and uh, see how she does out there. All right, man, so we're in the van, the sweet uh, <laughs> Ford uh, Econo line, and uh, it's time to give us the ultimate CD setup. Now, I, I do already have a CD changer in here, which uh, I'm gonna admit is uh, pretty darn sweet. Maybe we'll do a video on that at some point, but uh, let's pretend that this doesn't exist, and uh, we're relying on uh, this right here. So, we're going to have to open this up, maybe for the first time ever, and uh, get our, our CD on. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. And we're going to have to remove the plastic on this, maybe for the first time ever. Oh, God, that's good. Welcome to the world. All right, let's set that there. We're also going to need some juice. Welcome to the 90s. See? Cigarette lighter adapter. <laughs> Pull that thing out. We'll plug this in. All right, we got power. Now where is... Yeah, there it is. So let's plug this in. And then you'd probably use some, like, sticky tape or velcro or something and honestly let's see yeah oh man i didn't think there'd be anything on that station hopefully i'm not going to get flagged for that staticky stuff but um all right so here we go let's see if we got juice 
Yes. If we put this in, we should hear sound, right? Okay. <laughs> it works! <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> oh, how retro is this? We got the 12 volt juice flowing in from the cigarette lighter into the CD player, skipping tracks. Oh, what a way to live. Of course, um, you know, you have to be careful because if you, if you pick this thing up or move it at all, and again, like this is, like you barely touch it. <laughs> and it's gonna skip. But when it, man, when it doesn't skip. Oh. It's, and it's, it's, it's skipping on a brand new CD. That's nice. Maybe there's just so much bass. <laughs> oh gosh, I mean, I tell you what, that is, that is too cool. Um, yeah, I mean, here it is, you know, it's, uh, it's not brand new. It's, uh, I guess, complete in box or whatever you want to call it, but it's my first CD player. What was your first portable CD player, and, and how did you come into it? Did uh, Was it a Christmas gift, uh, one glorious Christmas morning, uh, or, or did you work and you save and you slaved? And, and how futuristic did CDs seem at the time. Let me know in the comments. If you like videos like this, uh, feel free to subscribe. We go through all sorts of old tech and uh, fix old stuff uh, that isn't supposed to be working anymore, but we, we, we try our best to get her back in shape. And uh, if you like the video, leave a comment. Uh, if you didn't like the video, thumbs down. And uh, <laughs> you know how that works. Thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have more videos like this coming up.